Hello War of the Visions fans, I'm Jackie Fox, and today I'm going to be making another tier list to, to try to make sense of the meta redefinition. In this tier list, I'm going to be talking about my top 60 favorite units. I was going to say this is going to be an all UR list, I figured it would be just naturally. Um, but then I remembered how cool Kamral is, and I think Kamral despite the fact that I didn't have anywhere to squeeze him on the physical chart. And that's also the reason it had to end at 60 characters. But um, Kamral should be on this list probably in maybe the B tier. Um, if, if not a little bit higher, he's, he's really good. And we're going to talk about why as we get into our S tier units. But um, I want to talk at first about like, you know, the methodology and how I'm making this tier list. I'm not looking at, like, there, there's a bunch of, like, gaming websites now that, you know, that have had tier lists for units, but are now getting up into, like, triple S tier and all sorts of crazy things like that. And I just wanted to reimagine it from the ground up. I wanted to give plenty of room and maybe just a few distinctions and also cut out a lot of units that maybe you shouldn't be focusing on at this point. Now, if you want, you could also think of the 60th unit of this video being whoever you have reincarnated. In that, even if I don't mention your favorite character in here, if you've reincarnated them a lot, they're probably pretty good. They're usable. They're usable. So anybody could be, but if we're talking about units that you want to invest in today, even if they aren't your favorite unit, then you're probably going to want to stick with the people that I'm talking about on this list. The way I organize this, S tier is coveted. These are the units that I see on basically every winning team. These, these units kind of define the winning teams. If you don't have one of these units, you're looking for one of these units. You know what I mean? Um, for A tier, these are the ones who round out those parties. These are their favorite partners. Um, these are the ones that make those compositions tick and... Uh, but still, even if you had three A-tier units on a team and no S-tier units, you'd be doing pretty good. Uh, if there was a synergy there, that might be one of the strongest teams uh, in the game. And then B-tier units, they definitely work with S and A-tier units. You wouldn't want a team of B-tier units all by itself, or it's probably going to get beat. Um, but they're good enough that they're not necessarily going to lose everything. There's definitely things that they can be used for. And then finally, C tier are units that I, I feel in good conscience I can recommend for a reason or another, but also I don't feel like they're the tippity top. Like, even in B tier, these are still some of the best units in the game. They may be more best in supporting other units, or maybe they're in here because they make an amazing combo that is greater than some of its parts with one of the A or S tier units. This isn't as true for C tier. They're just kind of, at this point, filler. And as this is the filler ranking, there are a lot of other units I could have fit into it. And really, the limitation was the geographical real estate of my and or your computer screen. So I could only fit so many units on here. So again, if your favorite isn't in here, then, you know, you can think of them as being either C or maybe even D tier. But with all of that being said, um, this is really PvP based. It's pretty heavily based on Arena as I play more Arena naturally than Guild Battle. But I'm also thinking about the way that people would work in Guild Battle. I'm also, uh, as a separate ranking, separate rating experience, we're going to be talking about the most used units in Guild Battle and how these units rank on that list as well using Wotive stats. And I was kind of surprised at how spread out and like you know i would have thought that the top 15 would just be all s and a tier units but that's not the case and there's actually a few units that rank in the top 15 either on offense or defense in guild battle that don't show up on this list at all because i didn't think they were good units i mean genuinely and i'm not saying that you you know okay maybe i am kind of saying that you shouldn't be using those units in 2024 but really what i'm trying to explain here especially with the way that guild battle differs like arena is whoever's doing good this week it's a lot more based on where we're at now you're gonna see the newest units in arena 
In guild battle, there is a very, very harsh bias, especially within the top 500 guilds. This kind of goes away as you get higher and higher up where people are refreshing their teams more often. But you'll see that units that are popular stick, right? Cloud was insanely popular when he came out, and he has been one of the most used guild battle units since. Even though I don't think he's a particularly good unit. Um, Helena, black-robed witch, the original UR Helena unit, dominated the meta when it came out. She was number one in guild battle for the longest time. Um, and I wouldn't consider her probably i mean she might she she could make c tier i guess but i don't even think she's a c tier unit she might even be d tier at this point so but but because she was that popular at that time so many people have her like sephiroth is one of the uh most used units again because of that unit popularity because people got him People built him up to like 80, 82 reincarnations quickly because, you know, you want to have a Max Sephiroth. That's just like a, a Final Fantasy player's one of our dreams come true. And so Sephiroth is overrepresented in Guild Battle, even though I think he's he's one of the higher tier units in here. But we're going to start with S tier, and this is only seven units, the seven strongest units in the game right now. And only two of these aren't represented on the Guild Battle Top 15 list. So let's talk about those two units first. I mean, the first is Doom the Spring Celestial, and there's kind of an inverse reaction to newer units in that newer units take a while to break into the guild battle rankings. I have no, no, no difficulty imagining that Doom will make it onto those ranks very fast. But maybe not week one, maybe not week two. Wait until more and more players have her for her to really break into those rankings, although I'm sure there's some people in top tier guilds that are seeing a lot of her already. The other unit that doesn't rank in guild battle on this list is Astrius, the Erudite Bolt, which is kind of odd to me. Um, I guess uh, Summer Glacella is strong enough that I'm not surprised that she made it over him, but really, I'm going to make a similar argument for Astrius that I'm making for Kamral. There's a lot of things that I have focused on about Astrius, his durability, his follow-up skill, um, just the general goodness and modernness of his kit. But one thing that I haven't put a lot of attention to is the fact that he can add courage removal to all of his hits for multiple turns. This is similar to one of the things, one of the many things, that make Aliyah the Alabaster pretty awesome. She can give uh, partner units and herself re-raise removal, which is really oppressive versus re-raise teams. And looking at the last three units on this particular list, hey look, it's a re-raise team. So, you know, she directly counters some things that are already here in the S tier. But kind of the new wave of these things is more courage-centered. I'm seeing a lot more courage strategies nowadays. And if you look at the first, first four units on this list, these are all courage units. Joom also has courage protection. But as I've noted, the courage protection is weaker, like the courage ceiling skills, are weaker and less likely to actually benefit you than having courage removal on hit. Because you're a lot likely to hit someone before they can seal you. Which means that Astrius is a pretty good counter into these first three units and even into himself um, for that reason. Also, has an elemental advantage over like the first two and pairs really well with Aliyah. And when you combine Aliyah's ability to give him re-raise removal, now all of a sudden every one of his hits can remove re-raise and courage. So he's basically... Um, if Sephiroth's LB took over his entire kit. And since Alaya and Astrius are within the same element, they're just natural to run together, and they make an amazing core for a lightning team. But also, I think the thing that pushed him over the top in being in the S tier, and kind of got him graduated up from A tier, other than being a Courage unit, which I think stonks for Courage units are going up with Doom, 
He also plays really well with Joom and A2. This is another powerhouse party that can be formed from these S tier units. You could either do a water based team uh, with the first two. Um, A2 works super naturally on that team, by the way. So you could have Joom, Glaciella, A2, or you could go full Greatsword, have Joom, A2, and Astrius. You could go more lightning. You would have to bring in a third unit to go with Elia and Astrius. And then I don't necessarily see A2 being on Helena and BB's team, but in theory she makes sense. And I think that team would still kick your ass. Even though it's not exactly the synergy that you usually see, I definitely think it could put in work. Um, so that kind of speaks to a lot of the units here. I think A2, um, A2 just works on so many good teams. And if the rest of her team doesn't let her down, she's one of the best units in this game. She does need some support though. I think a lot of people have the inclination to put her on teams with really fragile units. And it just doesn't work out for her because she can get overwhelmed very easily. She is not tough. Not in the same way that, I don't know, every one of the units that comes before her in S tier is. I mean, even BB has passive re-raise plus uh, a, a threshold heal, which often trigger together, meaning that he has basically passive full life, where the best that, that A2 really has is re-raise. And, you know, Helena's got, like, some big heals, but I guess so does A2. So she's about it. Well, I don't know. Helena's kind of tanky in some other ways. Like, she's she has good defenses, and she has Reflect. Um, yeah, everyone, everyone in S tier is tankier than A2, I guess is my point. So she's the easiest to just get slapped down. And if she dies, like, if you have A2 on your team, your goal should be to keep her alive. Because the longer she stays alive, the more she will massacre the other team. Just absolutely commit war crimes against them. But if she falls fast then they're going to commit a war crime against you pretty quick. All of that being said about these units, let's look at how they rank in guild battle. The first one that ranks is Summer Glaciella. Unfortunately, she only makes the defensive charts and comes in at 15th, which is as low as I uh, looked in those charts. Elia the Alabaster, I actually expected to be higher for offense. Um, on attacking teams, she is 6th place in guild battle, and for defensive teams, she's 7th place in guild battle. A2 has, has I mean, I'm, I'm actually impressed that a limited unit got this high. Like, she's even higher on average than BB, and BB was a major hype unit. So people got really, really hype for A2, and... I mean, I think she has a, like out of out of every unit in this tier right now. The other problem I have with A2 is that she has the least update potential. Like BB update potential kind of sucks. Uh, Summer Glaciella's only going to be getting updated once a year, which kind of sucks, but it is better than nothing. Um, but A2 is likely going to get nothing unfortunately, but she ranks at third on offense and fifth on defense. So very powerful girl all around. Um, Vivi's kind of the inverse fifth on offense, but fourth on defense. And then the number one undisputed champion of guild paddle once again is Helena with her new light elemental form ranking both first place in offense and defense. So quite stunning. Moving into A tier, these are units, I still think you could build teams around them, using multiple of them on the same team is usually pretty great. I mean, there weren't, uh, splashing in one of the S units here where applicable is usually pretty good. In particular, like, Joom and Summer Glaciella with either Elda or Ferris is almost unstoppable. Joom with either with both of those units is a pretty good team it's, itself. Summer Glaciello with those two units is a pretty good team itself. Maybe not unstoppable in the same way that the Joom variant is, the more S tier variant is. And hell, if you had Elda, Perrine, 
and Ferris on a team together, they would also be pretty good. Although Perrine isn't necessarily in A tier because of her strength on a water team, I think Perrine is definitely a better combo with other units like 2P or Alaya. So definitely building a strike team around her is probably the best way to go. And looking at the units that we have available to us in these two tiers, that would probably be the best team here. Then you have some fire finally showing their head for different reasons. Soul's a very modern unit. He's pretty durable. He can be an absolute pain in the ass to take out and very powerful as well. Um, truly a powerful unit, but maybe not the best of the best. Yuffie can also be really aggravating to fight. Um, and there's a, a, a number of evasion units here because I just think they're the best examples of evasion right now. And 2P and Lucio fit into that as well. So these three made it here for kind of the evasion niche and being the very best at it. So, you know, there's a specific way that you want to play them, specific teams that you want to play them on. It also helps Lucio and 2P specifically that they're both... Um, earth units. 2P has a little bit more flexibility because of her job. Again, she can work into strike teams very well, but I think that Lucio uh, is maybe the better of the evasive of the two units, so he stands toe-to-toe -to -toe with her um, just on the strength of his own merits, and maybe he'll bring a lot of power to Axe someday. The, the two of them work really well with Bradley, who has like moderate evasion potential. If you're building for the other two to be evasive, he might be able to dodge some skills and he has a reflex type skill. So um, he can be uh, RNG evasive. And then let's see, who else haven't I talked about? Oh yeah, there's, there's basically a whole win team in A tier as well. We have Veritas of the Heavens, who is just very powerful right now. Zidane who has like limited courage protection. He has a more limited version of courage protection than Joom does. It's worth pointing out, but it's not great. I mean, he's also a good pierce chainer and has really powerful follow-up damage. All of these things are great for him. And then you have Dario, who's just an amazing tank. In fact, we're gonna see a couple of tanks here in A tier. I don't think any of them are really like pushing things so far as to be S tier, but they're all really amazing. Any of them would be great for you. Dario being a really good versus magic tank. Oldoa being, I think, kind of cream of the crop for generalist tank. And then Roth being probably the best for a uh, defensive uh, versus physical tank. And then uh, also Dario, to mention, Dario specifically has piercing moves as well, so he can chain with these two here, at least in pierce, and there's going to be more pierce wind units on this list for him to play with as well. Aldoa herself makes a really awesome combo with basically any water or ice unit that I've mentioned so far. There's other things that she works really well with. Um, apparently, Helena, and I've, I've only seen this team once, and I almost took out two of its units. Um, <laughs> I don't think I was really specced for it, but at the same time, it, they, they beat my ass pretty well. But Oldoa, Dario, and Helena as kind of a mage-powered team. I also really like, if you want to lean all the way into the vision card synergy of Oldoa, Vivi, and Helena, also very powerful. And even before these things were introduced to the meta and became kind of the standard for that type of magical offense build, and remember, Helena's number one, so she's really bringing up anyone who can partner with her a lot. Roth also was kind of the ideal partner for this and allowed you to swing more dark, which helps certain players, but I think as a strategy, it's fading. If any of these tanks was gonna fall out of A tier, it would be Roth, but not by a whole lot. And then you have Sephiroth. Sephiroth is amazing. I mean, you know, big, if he had courage, he needs courage or re-raise or something. He does have high elemental resistance and he's kind of tough otherwise. So he can be a general big threat, but at the same time, if you can do enough damage, then you can just wipe him out in one hit. It's, it's not that bad. I have a lot of the same feelings about him as I do about A2, except that I don't think he's as good. I, I really don't. Um, because he gets squished even easier. Like, he doesn't even have re-raise, which he does. That being said, his LB is big piece of tech. Big AoE damage. 
removes re-raise and courage so it it screws with everybody you know that's probably one of the best ways those are the two best ways to keep yourself alive at least for one more turn in this game there aren't as many i mean you know it i think big parts of the matter are becoming more more about how you interact with that and he's always had good interaction with that i think that's going to keep him uh, a very good unit for a long time but his stonks are fading too. He also makes a really good partner with Roth. And if we wanted to make an all dark team, we could also throw in Vivi from the top tier to have a full dark team of SNA tier units. It's also quite powerful. From there, let's see how these units rank in guild battle. And actually not many of them rank in guild battle anymore. For offense, Bradley ranks at 11th. Um, for offense, Roth ranks at 4th. And defense, she ranks at third, so she's pretty high up there. Sephiroth, again, from being an incredibly popular unit that was seen as a must-pull when he came out, a lot of people invested very heavily in their Sephiroth stonks, so he's going to be a big deal in Arena, even after he's relevant. Like, he's going to stay in there like Cloud is. Um, maybe even more so than Cloud he may be the more popular unit definitely so second place to helena um and again like and and i hope that that explains so you understand how he can come second in guild battle but not be an s tier unit and it's you know it's it's because part of why he is ranked so highly in guild battle is just sheer popularity it, it was hype when he came out and just coolness. He's a fucking cool unit, okay? Don't make me explain Sephiroth. Looking into B tier though, um, we see like a whole, a whole ass light team emerge out of nowhere. Um, we do have the number one uh, guild battle unit. Helena is on our team, but I think that in a lot of ways she works better on a rainbow team than she does in light. Lucio, I haven't seen a bunch. He just hasn't impressed me when I've seen him. In Technically, he does seem kind of similar in his kit to the Ashen King. And because of the way that his kit works, I think he'll probably partner well with the Ashen King. As little, like, story sense as that makes. Um, but at the moment... Without that partnership, I think he's really similar to Bartz and Stern. Um, Stern has a little bit of a nat more of a natural connection with Helena because it's his mom. No, nah, it's because they both share re-rays, so that really helps. Where Bartz is more of a courage boy, so he would fit in more with the courage teams. I think... I want to say Lucio is a great sword unit this time. Which would mean he could work with June. That could be cool. You know, these units are, are all pretty good in their own right. Uh, Bartz is especially well geared towards physical matchups. But I think that that also fails him quite a bit in magical matchups. And those are kind of the up and comers right now. So that hurts him a little bit. But I think that in some ways, in very specific physical matchups, he's maybe the better of the three. Um, but again, I haven't seen a super, super ton of new Lucio, and it, it's kind of hard to compete with Stern as well. But at the same time, Bartz was a free unit, which is pretty nuts. Also, because he was a free unit, I am going to go ahead and hazard a guess that he is one of the ones that ranks in guild battle, just because it was easy to build him, and he was very strong to build. And there was a, a lot of hype coming out before him because he was of such a strong free unit. Looking into potential earth element stuff, this is going to be our fourth, fifth, and sixth earth element uh, characters. So earth is, earth is doing pretty good. Um, even though they don't have an S tier unit yet, they're definitely getting an S tier unit with the Ashen King. And he's going to be a big deal. Um, so let's look at who else we have. First up, we have uh, Garnet. Now, I was kind of tempted to put Renoa into this tier as well. Garnet was also a free unit, so hopefully you built her up. The reason I picked Garnet over Renoa, though, I think Garnet has way better offensive capabilities. 
while having a really good AI for her heals. And her heals are also really, really good. Um, I think Renoa is technically the better healer, but she also does a bit less. And, uh, you know, in some ways the all uh, attacks resistance that is on Renoa's heal, even though there are element, even though I think that in terms of like pure healing power, Reno is better. I like that a lot in uh, in Garnet's kit, and I think that that's very much worth running. So that nosed her up into B tier in my mind. Um, Earth has needed a healer for a long time. I don't think that there are a ton of modern healers that really are relevant in the game. You're only going to see maybe two of them on this whole list, maybe three, and they're all in B tier uh, for right now. So, uh, it was, it was, she had to be pretty special to make it. She's also one of the few 90 cost units on this team as well. I mean, on this list as well. And again, free unit. So, cool on us getting her. Then there's Dialdo. Dialdo is a really good, all, he, he's similar. He's kind of similar to the more modern tanks. But he's a lot more like Roth. He's a lot more power scaled to Roth, and she was the one of the three above that I said was most likely to fall into B. So being just a little bit weaker than her, I would say he falls into B. He he definitely has fallen into B. He's a little bit more like Aldoa though, in that he's more of a generalist tank, and he's a little bit more specified into single target resistance. Which means that he's going to have a bit of trouble with AoE teams in some ways. That's kind of his counter. But a lot of the single target stuff is going to not be as big of a deal for him. Ironically, this might make him a really good counter for the Ashen King. But we'll have to see about that. And then Melnia. Okay, this is controversial. I didn't know where to put Melnia. I haven't really seen her. She got skipped and put out late here on Global. But at the same time, the few times that I have seen her, she's done really unexpected, surprising, and powerful things to me. And I, f I feel like she is a big part of a redefinition of what gunners and ranged units in general can be. And kind of a bit of power creep to help them keep up with the Alaya meta. So she's almost certainly one of the better gunners in the game. It's just my fault I haven't seen more of her, I guess. Um, then moving on, there's some lightning units here as well. Yep, three lightning units in this tier. Now, these are going to work well with Alaya and with Astrius. So, you know, just looking at the teams that you could build with that. Um, if you put Alphonse in here to give the team, like, a real tank, that can be really, really, really dangerous. Um, because... He's very durable. He's more of a versus physical tank. He's, um, I would say he's more like Perrine, but hits harder. I mean, he's a strike unit. He has a lot, he, he, he plays like a strike unit. He's a lot more like snow, maybe without the heels and maybe just a little bit more armored, but he can really give those other two a lot more room to shine and a lot more time to take out like courage and re-raise and stuff that can be really dangerous. Vega is quite powerful as well. He has a lot of ways of mitigating damage. He has both re-raise and courage in his kit. So he can often stack those two together, which is makes him very hard to kill. He's pretty accurate as well and does a good bit of damage, has some decent AoEs. He's uh, one that I wouldn't sleep on because he can he can definitely mess you up if you're if you're not expecting him. Um, but that being said, I don't think a lot of people like went hard on this unit, so you're not gonna see the most of him. But when you do, he can be pretty tough. And kind of the same story for Winter Roth. Um, I don't see her a ton. There weren't a ton of people who got her. I underestimated her when she initially came out, but she has pretty ridiculous heals. She has pretty ridiculous skills. Um, I'm just always impressed by how much she does in every fight that I see her in, um, both as a support and then later as an offensive unit. She seems to have both of those roles covered pretty well. And this makes her a lot like Garnet in my mind. Like, she reminds me a lot of, of all the things that I just said positively about Garnet are true for her as well. Then moving on into the ice units, there's actually five. Five whole ice units here. 
there was one ice unit in S tier, one ice unit in A tier. So A2 and Oldoa are a powerful combination together. And then let's so let's assume that you have those two for your team. How do you fully build that team out? You already have a tank, so you probably don't need snow. I would say snow is probably best for people who don't have a Doa. Putting both of them on your team might just make it too slow, which while it feels like a defensive positive, I just don't think it will be. Both of them have a lot of uh, like ability to heal back though, so maybe that could work for sustain, but usually that's not a good design premise. Having a little bit of extra healing, actually Velus might push it overboard because A2 can heal herself, Oldoa can heal herself. You probably don't need a healer on this team either, but if Velus could instead focus on giving everyone haste instead of having to heal people, which she's also good at, um, hasting your tank, and especially hasting A2, who gets really bloody fast, is just a powerful combination. That works really well. Jaden and Howlett. Oh, I'm surprised I didn't put Reagan on the list, because I, I really feel like Reagan and Howlett have similar usabilities in terms of, of their places, units. Um, so let's, let's just pretend that Reagan's here in B tier as well. Because I, I, again, Reagan and Howlett are basically interchangeable to me. Jaden is a bit more unique and interesting and uh, is, is a lot of fun to play with and definitely a curveball to play against. Also an interesting part of a Lance team. Snow also gets extra points here. He's not, again, here necessarily for his place within ice, but his potential to be another tank tanking option for strike teams is also pretty great. Especially since, you know, Ice has just gotten a better tank, I would say, uh, in Aldoa. And then... Alaya. So Alaya is a little bit complicated. Alaya is a unit that I wouldn't necessarily run with A2. I think this is a, this is a problem. Um, I, mentioned, I mentioned this a lot. And like, that team can be good uh, on offense. Don't get me wrong. But it doesn't play to A2's strengths to have a partner that can be very easily taken out, I guess. Um, but that being said, if you don't have A2 and you want someone who, you know, does a lot of damage, can also re-raise remove. So she's good into re-raise teams, especially good into like Dario, because she can remove his re-raise at a distance as well while doing massive damage. Um, she's not a bad character, and before Melnia came out, she was certainly the strongest missile unit. They've done a lot to kind of revitalize those units since I last complained about it. Maybe because I complained about it, who knows? But, you know, Alaya is doing better now, so I think that makes her a solid B tier choice. Astrius, not so much for his place on water teams. I think he's a little bit of a weakness on water teams, but he's, he's still pretty good if you build him right. And still pretty strong, you know. Look, if this is Joom and Summer Glaciella, you have two S tier units, you can afford to have an Astrius on your team. You'll probably be fine against everything but Lightning and Lia Strike. Um, but I think that he's maybe even a bigger deal on Katana teams, where he could pair up with, say, Dario and Sephiroth to have, like, a, another really powerful, also villainous. DPS to play with, but also have a really cool katana tank that could potentially heal them as well on the team. That would be really helpful for him. Shalza. Shalza is a 70 cost unit. I haven't put a lot of 70 cost units on here, and I... Uh, she always surprises me at just how good a support she is. There's a team right now that's Joom, A2, and Shalza, that's almost unkillable. Almost. Um, because Shalza gives courage. Shalza then gives regen. Um, Joom and A2 are either healing themselves as they attack, or they're using HP absorb skills healing themselves as they attack. And then they get regen on top of that. So, uh, any attack that doesn't take them out is probably going to get healed back to full, even without additional healing, but if Shalza needs to, she can do that too. And then they always have that extra courage to fall back on. It's just, uh, it's, it doesn't seem like a team that makes a ton of sense when you look at it, except for the Greatsword synergy. 
but holy shit, it works. And I've seen a number of people using it and every time it's been pretty dominating. Omnilus I put on here for a couple of reasons. One of them is gonna be her, her coming update. Her coming update will add guaranteed hit for three turns onto her LB before dealing damage. So anytime she goes into a matchup against basically any evasion but Yuffie and um, maybe Yuffie has other problems if she's going up against a team with Omnilus on it. She's going to be wiping the floor. Like, she would trivialize otherwise very difficult evasion units like 2P and Lucio. Absolutely trivialize them for multiple turns. Um, I think that's really powerful. It may not be quite as good in Guild Battle where she can only use that, L uh, that LB once, but, um, I think that's an incredible niche to have. And especially with Joom and Summer Glaciella, our two S tier water units here, having basically no capability to deal with evasion. Even though she's a B tier unit, even though I've listed off a number of other water units at this point, both in A tier and in B tier already, I think there could be an argument to putting Omnilus as the perfect third for that team just because of how well she deals with that particular weakness of theirs. Then we have Addison Ray. Addison Ray is a free unit based on a TikToker that was released highly controversially into the game. She's pretty powerful. She can give people courage, guaranteed hit avoidance, and a threshold heal as a buff. That's that's really cool. Um, she also does a lot of damage, has really, really good penetrations. She's not necessarily very durable, and technically she could give herself courage, but usually doesn't, So, which means that usually she's playing with like no guard. She has no re-raise, no courage, no way to bring herself back, typically. Um, and that's a real problem for her. But also speaking of units that don't have courage, that, um, and also units that Shalza plays really, really well with, um, Kingmont. So Kingmont was one of the first, I think he was the first, second generation, so year two, uh, 100 cost units. And he has been updated quite well since his release. He may be one of the oldest units on this whole list. Yeah, everyone else is pretty new. <laughs> yeah, the only person who even comes close is Asterius, I guess. No, oh, Asterius was definitely after Mont. Okay, so uh, King Mont has gotten to the point where, you know, in addition to being an intimidating physical tank, he also has like automatic threshold heals, automatic hate, like a lot of the things that tanks need. He's just a really solid, good tank. And unless you have a good strategy for taking him down, he can complicate things for you. Um, one of the things notably he's missing from having like the snow package or the VV package, kind of like having that threshold heal and something to keep you alive, but even though he has enough HP to usually survive attacks and stuff. Um, and get that threshold heal off. If you can give him courage, that just makes him even more durable. And it's something that's definitely missing in his kit. So being able to supplement that in very easily with Shalza is great. And to that point, there's a lot of fire units on this list, actually. Even though I don't necessarily think that Shalza has to be in fire. I think she plays well and her courage ability specifically plays well with so many of the other fire units on this list like all of them. Somehow at the end of B tier, I'm coming back to how much I like Shalza. Looking at how they do in arena, uh, Bartz is 14th on offense, 11th on defense. Stern is eighth on offense, sixth on defense. I didn't even mention Glaciella, the flag bearer of reform, who is obviously a very powerful partner with uh, especially Veritas of the Heavens and Dario. We saw this team dominate Arena for like two weeks, three weeks previously, um, under two different paradigms, so maybe like a whole month. Um, that being said, she was probably the weakest member of this team. I'm not sure that Zidane is an improvement over her necessarily because she had a good synergy, but I think Zidane is generally a better unit. 
Um, she's incredibly accurate. She has a lot of chaining, a lot of power. She has the ability to remove, I think, re-raise and courage separately. So she just has a lot of kit. And now that she has uh, granting herself courage on her limit break, she's definitely very good. So definitely worth 7th place on offense in guild battle and 13th place on defense. Uh, Addison Ray is not on offense teams, apparently, but she is 14th on defense, and then King Mont is 13th on offense, but 8th on defense. So quite a high defensive ranking still for who is absolutely the oldest man on this list so far. Still doing good. So with all of that being said, let's move on to C tier, and as you'll see, I had to make the screen bigger. Um, all right, so looking at some ice units, and and these are all these are all units that I think have some potential, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend them. Right, Lastwell. Lastwell is actually one of the older units on this list. Now we're getting into like people who have been updated into relevance, and some other people. Um, so Lastwell, he still does a lot of damage. He's still very accurate. He can be evasive. He has a Mirage Shield, which means he can take the first hit of damage with no full mitigation. Um, that can sneak him into situations where he has enough time that A, he can hit anything he needs to, and B, he can take it out. And if he's having trouble with that, it's very, very easy for him to remove people's ice resistance too, which is just a general benefit to his whole party in a lot of cases. So there's a, a lot of reasons why Lastwell has remained very good. It's a shame Rain wasn't like kept up and maintained at this level. I think recent changes to Freevia have made her a really nice tank. Um, and her, uh, I'm sorry, and Ice has a lot of tanks on this list as you can see. Um, unfortunately, she's my third favorite tank for Ice, um, but she does kind of fill in that third slot in that we have a generalist tank in Aldoa, we have a physical tank in Snow, and finally we have the magical tank in uh, Freyavia. And Freyavia also has like all sorts of white mage stuff that she can do, which is pretty unique for a tank and like very powerful. She has full life. Like, she can bring someone back to life fully to defend her. That is awesome. What a good tank. Then we have um, also one of the older units on this list. Really reaching back for, for C tier. Skahal. So, Skahal does huge damage. Um, much like Lastwell, he can be accurate. He can be one of the more accurate lightning units. Uh, you kind of have to build him for it. But in addition to that, he's also really good at breaking lightning resistance too. So big boom for lightning teams. But usually he does enough damage that that's not necessarily important because they're already dead. His kit is really lacking though. He has auto courage, which helps him sometimes, but... You're kind of hoping that everything one shots him at that point, but then, and and he he's really like he can only take like two consecutive hits because of that because the first one has to one shot him to trigger the courage because if it only takes out part of his health, the second attack is going to take him out. But the second attack is going to take him out anyways because courage only leaves him at one HP. So you really need someone consistent to be healing him up in between these or other ways of getting. You know, maybe giving him re-raise or something. Um, but even that's kind of risky. There's just... It's a high high risk, high reward kind of strategy here playing Skahal. The reason that he made it into C tier, though, despite that, is that he is part of the Black Mage class. And, um, like, he is just incredible on a team with Helena and Vivi or... Helena and uh, Oldoa, you know, T oh my god, like Oldoa keeps him super safe too. Oldoa definitely helps with the uh, with the Auras as well. Then you have Lightning. So Lightning's a bonus unit right now. Lightning has received all sorts of upgrades. If I had to pick a FF or FF um, protagonist unit to use in this game, 
at least for the lightning element, it would it would probably be lightning. I think she's the best. Squall makes it onto this list, but um, I think I, I, I enjoy lightning more, I guess. I also don't have Squall, so I can't comment, but um, lightning is one of the more accurate lightning units, even more so than Skahal. Does a lot of damage, has heal on KO type abilities, or restore AP, I think. Has follow-up damage, which can be really, really especially helpful with Courage. I think this could be especially helpful, maybe... Yeah, it, it can help out with Doom. It can help out with the type of teams I think she's going to enable. And then I also threw in Fang and Squall. I feel like they're a similar power level. I don't have either of these characters, but, like, they just all feel kind of mid. Um, you know, Squall was a little bit above mid when he came out, but he's mid now. I feel like Fang came out strictly mid. Um... And Lightning was really quite powerful when she came out, and she's maintained well. That's why she's still in C tier, but I think at this point she is also getting kind of mid. Then we have Renoa. So remember what I was saying about Garnet? Renoa is just less offensive, more supporty, more likely to get stuck into support spirals, that kind of thing, and just not as geared for an offensive meta as Garnet is. Which is a shame. They are very similar units. They were released very close to one another. Um, Renoa seemed really cool until we got Garnet, and I realized that I just like Garnet better. Uriel is a very powerful Earth Strike option. She's very good against Missile. Was it Pierce? Or is it both? She's, she has um, weapon type resistance is, is, is a thing I'm getting at here. And she often makes a really good counter to a lot of the better lightning strategies, or at least she did. Um, I feel like this element of what makes her good is going to get kind of replaced a little bit with the Ashen King. But also, I don't know how well the Ashen King is necessarily going to fit on a strike team. The fact that she fits on the strike team is definitely an advantage to her. Because there are a lot of strike teams that have to worry about what their strike mirror looks like, and having an earth team helps to sure you up against Alaya. So, you know, she can be very helpful for that. Eliza is in here because she... There were times when I preferred her, but I think, especially as common as, like, re-race has gotten, the fact that um, Alaya has re-race removal, that's probably the big thing that's putting her in B tier while Eliza is in C tier. Because I really like what Eliza does. She does a lot of things automatically on hit or on crit. Um, and she's very good at getting those crits. So, you know, there's... She's just doing a lot with each attack, even though her kit doesn't look like it does a lot. So she's pretty good. Ruin Stern has definitely... I think getting Courage is going to kind of bring him back from the grave. He's got Courage and Mirage Shield. So, you know, a lot of the same stuff that I was talking about for Lastwell, he's a very similar unit to Lastwell, actually. Um, Greatsword also means that he has good partners. Lastwell also being a katana means that he has good partners. So those are both pretty cool units. Stern doesn't break dark, but he does break defense, and he does break healing power, and those are... Uh, the healing power especially can be really relevant now so just a lot of cool things on him dark fina is a really powerful mage quite accurate her casting times are a bit of a problem um but she came from a really great place in the meta i think she's you know there there's definitely some reasons that she's in c tier she also doesn't have a lot of aoe which is generally seen as preferable but instead she leans in super hard to single target and i think that with certain single target strategies maybe the ashen king coming in the future um you could find yourself in a situation where you're looking for a unit that does single target damage incredibly well and this would be it then on kind of the flip side of that coin the courage physical unit to the magic re-raise unit Lil Leela the Bold is offensively quite powerful. She's a more physical slash based unit. She also, both of these 
girls are relatively good at being brawlers, so they can take damage pretty well. And they're both pretty accurate as well, because they were both coming into a meta where, like, Locke and Elena were the things that they chiefly had to contend with. So they're both quite accurate to be able to deal with that, and that helps them against some evasion strategies that sneak back into the meta from time or time. Um, but I think that her working with Dark Slash is also probably a little bit of a benefit to her as well. Moving on to Varush. Varush is on this list for a pretty specific reason. Um, it's not so much for his ability to work with Wind right now, but more his ability to work with Katana, in that he's really like the only healer that they have access to, and it's kind of special that they do have him. Healers aren't always the best though, and he is a Blade Soul main, which means that he is more inclined to be offensive, so Again, we're kind of putting him in that Garnet space, but he has full life, which is a pretty big deal. In fact, there's a lot of units on here that have full life, and just having full life in your kit alone is a big enough of a thing. Also, I think I think Shalza might, but whatever. There's a lot of full life units in here, and it's just a big deal. Like, if you can bring back an S-tier unit from the dead to fight again, although maybe more like if you can bring back Dario or Sephiroth for this guy since he's going to be playing Katana. Um, that's really impactful. Sodley is a fucking curveball. Like, it depends what happens with his charm LB. Uh, that, that really can be a game changer when it lands. He also has the ability to break CT and agility, which is really good for getting his team to lap yours. So there's a lot of ways that he can wombo combo you um, even though I think that in a lot of ways he is aging, he also has some strategic factors, like I just mentioned, that don't age poorly, um, that keep him relevant and mean that he can really change, like he can absolutely change the tempo of a, not the tempo, but he can swing a fight really, really quickly with his skills in a way that few other units on this list can. He's just one of the weaker ones to be able to do it, and he doesn't do a lot of other things too, I guess. Sylvie is basically the red mage version of Varush. She is, uh, she has a better main job. She has a large scale re-raise removing skill that also inflicts slow, very powerful. Um, and she has full life, so uh, as part of a sub job, of course. Um, but really, really powerful, overpowerful heals, even. Um, also a red mage, so that's pretty cool for her. Uh, the thing is, being maybe even more primarily a healer in some ways, with that really being her claim to fame, it's a little bit of a shame that healing isn't as important or prioritized in the meta at the moment, or at least. A dedicated healing unit because a lot of tanks heal themselves and others a lot of offensive characters heal themselves and others like there's a lot of examples of this throughout uh, the a and s tier um so they don't necessarily need a healer to back them up anymore elena is very evasive uh also has decent penetrations all those though those aren't as good as they used to be at least relative to other units that are out uh kind of the same for her evasion but, you know, that being said, you run into um, a build of her that you can't handle and you will get wrecked by it. She will absolutely fucking wreck you. <laughs> Which is actually kind of the same deal for Setia. Setia just has so... Just, just big, huge AoE damage that reduces fire resistance. It's, it's so scary to go up against her. She just she bombs the field like she feels like she has nukes on that bow it's ridiculous she has a lot of the same problems as the other missile units that we're going to talk about here and that as soon as you get up to her you can one tap her i mean you can basically punch her in the gut and kill her you just punch straight through the gut um <laughs> and i mean this is true of like alaya or eliza and Shadow Link's the Crystalborn, who's the last one on this list, and even the, I feel weird putting her in here, right? If it weren't for the fact that she has so many good water partners to work with, that sometimes she just works. Like, she has great teams. 
Uh, you could put her with Joom and Summer Glacella. Great. She's on a team with two S tier units, two of the best in the game. And even though, you know, my lightning team or my strike team can beat that usually pretty reliably, I think I've lost to this team before, this exact team. Um, even though I generally don't give her a lot of credit, there are times when you can use units like this strategically with very powerful other units, especially, you know, her getting under auras. And I think um, auras are probably one of the things that might help missile units the most this day and age, but most of them are still so squishy that even an aura wouldn't really save their bacon. They're kind of, they're, they, they're going to have problems. With all of that out of the way, before we go to the final rankings, I want to look at the guild battle rankings a little bit more closely. Uh, we've kind of talked about them as we're going through, but I'm going to read off the most used units as of April 4th, 2024. Um, these are going to be ranked by their offensive ranking, and I'm also going to list their defensive ranking. So number one is Helena. She is on 17.97% of teams, and she's also first place on defense, where she's in 19.14% of teams, so almost 20%. Sephiroth comes in second for both at 13.53% and 12.17% respectively. A2 comes in third and fifth with uh, 12% and 10.6% respectively. Roth uh, comes in fourth and third with 11.4% and 11.7%. Vivi is 5th on offense, 4th on defense, with 11.2% either way you look at it. Alaya the Alabaster is 6th and 7th, respectively, with 7.75% and 6.73%. So it's going to be kind of a drop-off. Um, again, surprise there are more units, uh, more people using her as she is clearly one of the more broken units i mean like it, it's been a while since and there's been a lot of uh meta reactions to her and strategies but still really good i'm surprised more people don't use her and just because of how iconically good she was for a while i'm surprised she didn't get stuck in the, the rankings a little bit more uh glacella flag bearer of reform comes in 7th and 13th with 7.36% and 4.88%, just under 5% on defense. Wing of Destiny Stern comes in 8th and 6th respectively with 7.17 and 7.05%. So he's actually on less teams on defense, even though he has a higher ranking on defense. Coming in number nine for offense is Cloud, with si being on 6.5% teams. He's also 10th on defense on 5.27% uh, of teams. He didn't even rank in my estimations of what the best units in the game are, but he's like the mascot. He's very popular. Helena, Black Rose, Black Rose Helena, Black, Black Rogue Witch, what, whatever. Um, ranks at 10th on the offensive charts. She does not rank on the defensive charts at all. Just not there. Bradley is 11th with 5.7%, and he also does not rank on defensive charts, which is a lot more surprising to me, actually, but I guess maybe Earth's easy to pick on for defense. Dark Fina comes in 12th in both, at 5.19% and 5.05% respectively. Kingmont is 13th in offense, 5.17%, and 8th on defense with 5.71%. Bards comes in 14th on offense, 5.09%, and 11th on defense with 5.16%. Elena is 15th on offense, 5.04%, and 9th on defense. 
with 5.2%, being on 5.2% of teams. And then there were two units that made the defensive charts that did not rank. That would be Addison Ray in 14th with 4.8, uh, representing 4.81% of teams. And 15th with Summer Glaciella representing 4.67% of teams. So here you can see how that really pans out for our lowest tier. And the only units on here that are actually being used, at least in, in the majority of teams used regularly in Guild Battle right now are Dark Fina and Elena. So now you know. Um, now I'm sure there's plenty of room to disagree with me. Uh, I would love to know like who else you think fits in C tier given that D tier is basically everyone else or anyone that you would probably never use under any circumstance unless there's a very particular niche you're going for, you really just don't have anything else or, I don't know, maybe limited cost content because I didn't so much think about, you know, most of these are 100 cost units so you would probably have to start cutting them for other things uh, during some limited cost content. And, you know, like I said, uh, if I had found the room to fit him on here, Comrall would probably be a B tier unit as an MR and would be the only MR unit on the list. So, there's options. But, uh, thank you so much for tuning in today. Be sure to like and subscribe, do the YouTube things. Also, there's a link in the description that's going to lead you to, uh, books, podcasts, all sorts of other Jackie Fox content. Highly, highly recommending uh, It Even Happens While We Sleep. This should be a book that uh, should strike a bit of a nerve for a lot of my audience, people who've grown up during like the age of surveillance capitalism, the pandemic, all of these things. Like, You'll have a lot to relate to within this book. So you know, if you're looking for something to read over the summer as you're hanging out by the pool, check that book out. The link will be in the description. There is a hardcover option for this that has a really nice cover that I am super excited about. Let me know if you have any problems with that or if you want like a signed copy or something, I can help you out with that. But with all of that being said, I'll see you in the next one.